In this video, I'm going to do some corrections on the answers from InMe. Uh, you guys have uh, the recording of her speaking tests, part one, part two, and part three. So these are the transcripts, uh, the words that she said. And I'm going to, uh, basically, I'm not going to um, add too much of my own answers, but I'm trying to correct hers and make corrections uh, to those things that need to be corrected, but not change it too much. So let's start. Okay, so there are lots of exciting places. You could say there are lots of exciting places there. Okay, one of the most interesting places is the theaters. You could say something like, um, we can enjoy all genres of plays there, from comedy to tragedy to historical plays. Now, you here I'm using the word genre, which means basically types. Uh, this is a good, let's take some notes here. This is a good uh, uh, vocabulary, okay? Uh, it's a less common vocabulary, topic-specific vocabulary, and these are the things that the examiner takes note of. So that's why I'm purposely inputting the term genre here. Uh, you can use it also for books, uh, movies, mu music, different genres, meaning uh, like for example, books could be fiction, non-fiction, um, movies could be drama, uh, comedy, etc. So these are the different genres here. I'm talking about the genres of plays from, could, could be a comedy, could be tragedy, could be historical plays. These are all uh, plays that you see in theaters, right? Um, then we're going to add one more point. Um, not just and beyond theaters, we're going to Talk about something else. Furthermore, I love the local Korean cuisine. Again, another good um, vocabulary cuisine. There, there are many great and cheap places to eat, and the food is, of course very authentic and something you can't get overseas okay perhaps the, the the word authentic too is good so these are some of the words that the examiner will take note of uh, so this is a good answer you, you talk about more than just you know don't just talk about one exciting place uh, talk about two places at least or two things um, one is an exciting place, a the theater, but the second thing that you like most about your hometown is the cuisine. Um, there are lots of exciting... So one of them is the most interesting places are places. Now, of course, if you read this, this is a very bad sentence structure. And you wouldn't say so in town, there are lots of theaters, so we can enjoy any kinds. Rather than saying any kinds, we could say all kinds or all genres. Rather than kinds, we would use the word genres. Okay, and it wouldn't be films, of course. Films uh, for cinemas. Okay, you go to a cinema to watch a film, but you go to a theater to watch a play, to watch a performance. Um, yeah. Okay. Next question is, so a popular place for tourists to visit. So you could write, Yes, there are many tourist attractions in Seoul. So right now I'm kind of like um, talking about the popular places, tourist attractions. Okay, this again, tourist attractions. This is a good phrase. Firstly, remember every time we. Uh, as I mentioned, this is like the introduction. Then you have the 
signaling word one, firstly, one of the most interesting places. Then you have a signaling word and then your second point, right? Okay. So make sure every time you have a, a, a first point, a second point, there's always a signal, not just for speaking, but also for writing. So firstly, there are some ancient palaces, which are popular destinations for foreigners. For example, now I'll give an example. The Now, of course, I did a bit of research here because I'm not really familiar with Korean so but the Gyeongbok Palace again remember uh, whether it's true or not it doesn't really matter you can just make up a place um, because this is uh, the examiner's not you know evaluating you based on whether you're speaking the truth um, was built more than 600 years ago but this is of course true because I did a bit of research and many foreigners visit there uh, also again I'm you know, my second uh, second point here we have furthermore now I'm going to talk about also so I'm going to talk about the second thing that is popular with, with tourists um, many people come to Seoul to eat our delicious food all right so you have tourist attractions you have your signaling here you have your example try to always give examples you can give an example uh, like maybe you could you, you could expand on this point by saying our Kim uh, we are well known uh, so is well known for its kimchi or whatever it may be all right uh, to expand it a bit more remember always try to give examples because it's just about the length and expanding your uh, answers okay you to to uh, to do well in your fluency and coherence to do well in your fluency you speak you know there's no hesitation and you can speak for at least a few sentences right um, so you don't use uh, let's see ancient palaces so I don't I use ancient okay that, that's something that goes with palaces okay very very old you wouldn't use antique now antique is for antique for example antique furniture but you don't say antique places you don't say antique palaces you could say old palaces or ancient palaces right um, now take a look here I expanded this rather than just say firstly there are some ancient palaces I use uh, which are popular destinations for foreigners now this is using relative clause remember one of the using a which that who uh, one of the criteria for grammar for both gr uh, writing and speaking is the use of complex structures or complex sentences so right, when you use a relative clause it's always a complex a sentence there all right um, let's go to the next question has so changed much in recent years okay this is a very popular kind of question in part one and part three has it changed much it's comparing right now and uh, before so you can say yes of course 10 years ago we didn't have convenient public this actually out of all these three answers here uh, in this first question on uh, this first topic I shouldn't put question one I should put topic one um, this is actually the best answer okay like you have this is not really yeah this whole thing is not really good this you have a lot of mistakes here in terms of antique and 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 all that so but this this whole sentence itself is pretty good okay I, I'm just making it even better but this is quite a good I mean as compared to the other two all right so yes of course 10 years ago we didn't have convenient public transport however the transportation infrastructure okay now I'm adding um, infrastructure let's just put this ancient some of the good words infrastructure here uh, infrastructure has developed I'm using the present 
perfect simple tense has developed? Has it changed? So I'm using the same tense, it's changed. This this has changed from uh, has developed a lot, and these days it is quick and easy. Um, it is easy to to travel around. Right. In addition, so I give another point. Right. In addition, furthermore, also okay, a second point, uh, second change. The first change is the convenient public transport. In addition, there are now very tall skyscrapers, unlike before. All right. So this is another good word. Tall buildings. For example. Our tallest building nowadays is over 100 stories. Okay, stories meaning floors, levels. Uh, again, this may or may not be true, doesn't really matter. Now, then I put on the other hand, so I talk about the good changes, uh, in, the, in the sense of more positive change. Now, now I go on the other hand, there is a lot more traffic congestion these days especially in the downtown area. So now these are some uh, traffic congestion downtown. These are good words. I don't like living there now because I like to be away from the hustle and bustle of city life. So here we have the idiom, hustle and bustle, the noise, the busyness. Okay, um, so this is a good, uh, good answer. Okay, you have your first point, your second change, on then you you, you kind of like turn around and talk about the opposite. Uh, in terms of the uh, the more negative part, and then you have a little uh, idiom here. Right, so that's good. Um, so what else do we have here? We use the tense, present perfect simple tense has developed. Um, so I also use some kind of cohesive devices, transitional signals, which for contrast, like however. Okay, to contrast 10 years ago we didn't now however okay then we use also on the other hand um, yeah okay and then again I gave an example whether this is real or fake right let's go to topic uh, two so I really like taking photos so whenever I visit beautiful places with my friend or maybe friends I take a lot of pictures I do this probably once a month okay um, so As you can see this I try to add at least one more sentence here now we, we used the um, whenever okay which is a conjunction now it's not every one month but you could say once a month right uh, okay so we're gonna expand on this because uh, this in me did not continue on you know giving reasons or expanding on this then uh, so the examiner had to ask why but let's go expand on this so I real I prefer taking pictures of people because in every picture every person has different facial expressions so when I take pictures of people I can take their individual expressions. Therefore, I like taking pictures. Okay. Now, 
one thing to note here is that there is a good use of um, uh, facial expressions, individual expressions. Okay, that's good. Uh, next one, what do you do with the photos you take? Right, um, now just take note of this. What do you do? Okay, I just write down my memories related. Okay, so related, not relate, related to the pictures. When I have special experiences, I always write down the story of the picture. All right, when I have special experiences, I always write down the story of the picture, right? And uh, the last question in this second topic. Um, now, take a look at this question. Do you think the way people take photos is changing? So it is the way, okay? So this uh, Inmi is actually not answering the question because she's not talking about the way she's kind of like she talks about albums versus websites probably like where you put the where you place your pictures last time you used to place it in albums now you just you know put it on your website upload it to the website facebook or whatever or even on your computer so uh, she's not talking about the way the way is um the difference between last time and now the uh, last time we used to have uh, normal cameras we use uh, we take using cameras and films whereas now we can take pictures using our mobile phones and even digital cameras we don't have to have actual films right so unless of course you are using a uh, i don't know i don't even know if nowadays you use films even for uh, photographers with uh, very expensive cameras do they still use films i'm not sure but anyway so you this is the focus this should be the focus of the of the answer the way we take photos has changed a lot here we have your present perfect simple tense again about 10 years ago we would use we would is something we uh, we would do uh, we used to use okay has pre here the wood has pretty much the same meaning as used to okay so we used to use cameras with films to take photos but nowadays we use mobile phones and digital cameras so it's much easier and more convenient to take photos these days okay so just take note you have you have you need to need to focus on the way okay which is about uh, which is about using mobile phones and digital cameras as opposed to using uh, cameras with films All right okay okay topic three now we they're talking about free time every day I have two or three hours of free time. Just a side note here, okay? Because I know some students um, have questioned this before now. Every day with two words is the, normally the, the, the way we use every day, okay? Uh, whereas every day as one word is actually an adjective. For example, uh, this is an everyday experience. Noun, experience is a noun. Adjective uh, is describing the experience. Okay, so this is the, the, the way you normally use everyday is with a space. This, we, sell, we don't use this as often. Okay, so every day I have two or three hours off. Okay, remember the off here, she did not use the word off. Free time. Now, you need she should probably expand a bit more okay remember one sentence answers is not good so maybe you could say something like on the weekends um, I have more free time probably around eight hours 
So maybe you want to say every weekday if you want. So so you can talk about one sentence talking about weekday, but weekends is different. All right, but just make sure you kind of uh, expand it a bit more. So off free time, off uh, two or three hours off free time. Okay. Um, question, second question, what do you like doing best in your free time? So I really like keeping a diary. When I keep a diary, I can reflect on what has happened in my life and write about it in my diary now. Write about it there. Now, uh, one thing I want you to note here, I've changed it a bit uh, because I you don't ref first see, let's let's go to uh, Macmillan dictionary okay and go to reflect how do you use the word reflect now for some of you who are going through this uh, video and I say some things like I'm using Macmillan dictionary and all that um, I'm talking about certain grammar points uh, just just remember we're gonna cover all this in writing class too because that's where I focus on grammar and vocabulary now. One thing I teach in writing class too is when you use the word, uh, some, some verbs are transitive and intransitive. Transitive means you have to have an object, a noun, directly after it. And intransitive means you don't have to, you don't have a noun or object directly after it. You could have a preposition, you could have nothing at all. Now, the way, um, in me use reflect, she use it as a, uh, Transitive meaning there's an object directly after, but that's not the way you use reflect. Okay, you when you, when you want to use it with the remember there are different meanings one two three. Uh, when you want to use it with uh, this meaning to think about something carefully, which is uh, basically the meaning she's using is intransitive meaning you don't have an object, you don't have a noun directly after, and very often you use reflect on reflect on something. Okay, so that's why I say when I keep a diary, I can reflect. I can reflect on what has happened in my life and write about it there, right? This helps me to remember what I've done and all the experiences I've gone through. Okay, just to expand it a bit more, all right? I wouldn't just want to, you know, I mean, leave it there, but I could expand it a bit more. Um, so for reflect, it's go to Macmillan which again, I teach more, I use a lot of this dictionary, I teach you how to use it in my writing class too, uh, which is intransitive, normally you use reflect on something. Okay, remember that speaking, uh, vocabulary and grammar is still very important, right? If you have more free time, how would you spend it? Uh, I would read more books than I do now. Not I want to read lots of books more than now. No, that's not more than now, no. Um, these days, I read an English book once a month. But I'd like to read maybe two English books a month. Or per month, if you want to say. So that's how I'd spend my time if I had more free time. Now you can you can go further. I mean, you just mentioned how you want to. If you have more free time, you spend it on reading English books. But sec, uh, uh, you could you know expand it a bit more also. So that's your signaling also. I think if I had more free time, I'd love to spend more time just hanging out with my friends and maybe going uh i'd love to spend more time and maybe going window shopping at the shopping mall with my girlfriends and girlfriends meaning her friends who are girls i don't get to maybe you can see this is because i don't get to spend a lot of time with them all right now let's just take a look now this is quite long i've i've uh, put two points basically um so 
hang out okay these are idioms okay hang out remember Id idiomatic vocabulary idiomatic language is uh, words it's about you know using phrases that you, whereby the meaning of the whole phrase is not um, you, you can't understand the meaning through uh, uh, understanding individual words so hang it's not this has nothing to do with hang okay you know like hang clothes or whatever this has nothing to do with hang so hang out just means spend time spend time doing nothing pretty much okay aimlessly in a sense but just spending time with friends okay so you can say hang out with my friends so that is idiom that, that's an idiomatic uh, vocabulary okay so um, it's an easy one okay so you could use it all right especially if a examiner asks you how you spend your free time or what you like to do with your like to do during your free time so hang out and window shopping also nothing to do with shopping for windows right window shopping means just going from shop to shop just you know not really buying anything maybe just looking but not really buying okay so um yeah okay so this is a good answer with some uh idioms here and it's expanded answer from what she's been doing if you realize a lot of her answers are not very coherent it's she, she she's very she repeats herself a lot some of her sentence uh do not you know make sense at all there are a lot of grammar mistakes so uh, all the sentences i have written here are perfect grammatically and they've got vocabulary and um uh, grammar complex structures um see if you when you use a conjunction if okay that's you know making sure you uh, you are you're already using a, a complex structure right so one thing you can see also about her, her sentences uh, a lot of times they are very they're just simple so you need to just as I mentioned before you need to use uh, use whenever you use conjunctions that's good but I also use the relative clause relative clause there are some ancient places which are popular destinations for foreigners so this also creates a complex structure all right all right let's go to speaking part two now um, a very not a very coherent or fluent piece of uh, speech here by in me so I'm going to try to say the same thing okay uh, so, some things are quite unclear there okay so anyway so this is my version of it one month ago I went to a farewell party for one of my friends okay he was going back to jump now he was going back not he went back when when means at that time this person already went back now of course the party is because you're spending the last time with him before he goes back right so it will be he was going back to Germany so we partied until past two o'clock so when you say when, when we write he was going back that means okay this party Friday night or whatever it may be um, we're having a party and maybe Sunday he's going back so was going so in the you know in the middle of going back but he he actually had not left that uh, had not left that country yet okay so maybe was going back here means he's, he intends to go back okay at that moment in time so we partied until past two o'clock to get back home I took a bus with my friend I often took now I often use no you don't use bus okay well yeah you often took the bus I often took bus number seven but that night I took bus number one now a lot of things as I mentioned I don't really understand so I'm just making trying to figure out what she's trying to say after getting off the bus I got lost or I lost my way I tried to find my home but I couldn't the more I walked along the streets the more difficult it became to find my 
home. I walked around the neighborhood. I think that's what she's trying to say. Not I walked around the neighbors, but the neighborhood. Neighbors are people, neighborhood is the place, and I met some people, but they didn't know where Histon Road was. Then I saw a house which had its light on, not, how did she express it here? Um, I saw a house in the town because the, la the house was turning on the light, no. Uh, definitely wrong tense you don't put was turning they were not in the middle of turning on the lights the, just the lights were on um, I knocked on the door but nobody answered and I became very very scared after that I started walking along the street and I met a man he was going to work that night so I asked him how to get to Histon Road okay now so this is my interpretation of what she's trying to say okay putting it all in uh, gr uh, using grammatically uh, correct English and um, so some was going back some corrections was going back as I mentioned already not went back you took a you took the bus uh, neighborhood not neighbors and I added a lot of uh, some cohesive devices like uh, in terms of time to express time like uh, what did I put then after that okay I don't think she did really use a lot of it but when you're talking about something that happened next you could use then or after the after that after this later on etc okay so you you're telling a story it's probably good to do that because you're talking about things that are happening in chronological and time sequences okay so use the time cohesive devices um, and the next part remember the next part uh, is where you have a rounding off question and the examiner will quickly ask you one rounding off one or two rounding off questions and you just answer it very quickly okay just one sentence you don't have to uh, say too many things but even the sentence she wrote or she said is wrong yes he told me my home now told me my home now okay so you can say yes he told me how to get to my home so I said thank you very much okay Oops. Okay, so yes, he told me how to get to my home. So I said thank you very much. All right, um, this is part three, going to subtopic one where it talks about helping others. So I think children can organize their rooms properly. First of all, after they use you're talking about notes or pencils pencils pens etc use their stationery okay so you have good words like stationery what is stationery is pen pencils and all that so let me just go to macmillan dictionary and let me show you okay there is stationery e and there's stationery just this stationery is an adjective to say something is stationary means it's not moving but what we're using is stationary with uh, E okay means pens paper etc first of all after they use their stationary they should keep it properly in addition again giving a second point they can use the vacuum cleaner well she did use uh, she did talk about the second point is just probably you should make it clear secondly furthermore not vacuum machine but vacuum cleaner to vacuum their room and keep it clean okay so vacuum cleaner is also a good um, word good phrase good topic specific less common vocabulary 
Next, how do you think children can best learn to be helpful to others? Um, the best way to learn to be helpful to others is to see their parents help other people. Right? So parents should not just talk to their children about helping others, but actually demonstrate this with their actions. So it's not just about talking, telling the children uh, that you have to do this, you have to do that, but they actually do it, they actually demonstrate it with their action. All right? uh, therefore, modeling good behavior, showing, demonstrating good behavior is the best way to teach children. All right, modeling is the, um, the verb. Okay, now, the best one is to see their parents help other people. So even though their parents... Okay, the, um, the best one, You should help other people is very important. Now, this is, this is really bad in terms of sentence structure. You should help other people is very important values, okay? Um, that's really bad sentence structure. Next, what about schools and teachers in my opinion again I'm not sure exactly what she's trying to say so giving my own interpretation schools and teachers can bring students to orphanages now she has struggled with pronouncing orphanages orphanages orphanage and orphanages are where orphans live okay orphans are those who do not have parents maybe they've died or or they don't know they don't live with their parents okay so orphanages are the, the, the places the place where um, these orphans live so students can learn to help people who are less fortunate than them okay less fortunate is good um, probably you want to expand this but I'm not gonna expand it because I don't know what she's trying to say okay so uh, you could give another point furthermore schools could also show movies or show documentaries or i don't know invite speakers to speak about you know how people live uh how poor people live and how they can help or whatever okay um mix in what ways can schools encourage children to help the community uh in my opinion they can show video clips about the life of poor people and encourage students to help these people and interact with orphans. Um, teachers can also tell students that orphans are also very important people. Okay, that's my interpretation. All right, subtopic two. Uh, let's think about working for other people without payment. What times of voluntary work are most popular in your country? Right. So you could start with the introduction. There are different types of volunteer work. She used volunteer work, voluntary work. I think both are okay. Now remember, she only. Um, I don't even know what she's talking about here. Okay, so I'm I'm and I'm gonna make sure you give. Yeah, what do you mean by to prepare dinner? Are you talking about you know children should help in their household to prepare dinner or breakfast? Um, I don't know. That's not called voluntary work. But anyway, uh, there are different types of volunteer work or voluntary work. The most popular type is teaching children or orphans. Sometimes older students will go to an orphanage and teach younger students about various things. Another, so I'll give a second type, popular type of volunteer work is talking to older people or even putting up performances. Putting up performances meaning you know, to do a performance for older people in a, I don't know, retirement home. Right? How do you think individuals might benefit from doing volunteer? Uh, 
voluntary work, right? Even though we don't receive any pay for our work, we can feel a sense of fulfillment. Okay, now, uh, she said, what did she say? I can feel very fulfillment. No, you can say I can feel, feel fulfilled, but here I prefer to use feel a sense of fulfillment. Um, so it is very helpful for me to encourage others in my life. Helpful for me to encourage others. No, I don't know. It's helpful for me to encourage. No, I don't know why she put encourage myself, but you're talking about encouraging others. And voluntary work is to do something for others, not yourself. Um, Um, but I guess she's saying that when we help others, then we also encourage ourselves. I guess you could put it that way, all right? Mm, I'm going to put an additional point. Also, we shouldn't just think about how we can benefit from our voluntary work because it's not just about us, right? I mean, we should think of how others can benefit. That's the purpose of voluntary work, right? Lastly, in what ways can volu voluntary work improve life for the community? Volunteer work can help people develop relationships with people in the community. Not you don't help first you don't make people have but help people develop, develop form relationships, not help people f have relationships. It's better to say develop or form relationships with people in the community as there will be a lot of interaction between the volunteers and those they are helping. Uh, in addition, many people in the community will benefit emotionally. I'm just giving another point and financially depending on what volunteers do. So the people in the community uh, would be able to benefit emotionally. Maybe if you put a performance for them or you talk to them, they feel better. Financially, a lot of volunteers will raise money and give, you know, uh, the money will be used for uh, the people in the community. All right, so these are emotionally, financially, these are good words too. Interaction. Okay, so this, these, uh, I hope this has proved helpful to you. Um, as you can see how I actually, uh, a lot of my answers are just, you know, making sure you have one point and you expand, giving examples, and then second point, um, and then give examples, expand or support it somehow. Remember, we try to make it at least two points and there, there will always be some kind of signaling word. Um, you could put, put um, firstly here if you want, if you want to put firstly. All right, and then sometimes we have topic-specific vocabulary, good, good vocabulary and some idiomatic vocabulary throughout this. Uh, I've, sh I've shown you various uh, uh, good words to use. And also you want to get your grammar correct. A lot of uh, Inmi's um, sentences are not very clear. Okay, not only uh, does she struggle to expand on her her answer, a lot of times she just give one sentence answers. A lot of times they're very simple sentences, no co no conjunctions, not complex sentences. But also some a lot of times they're not very clear, right? And w without good grammar, without good sentence structure, so that's also very important. That's why overall uh, her mark is probably at a five point five to six for her for her speaking. Okay.